Now there's debate. Her and uh, Donald Trump will be going head to head. Now there's some interesting debate rules. Um, it's interesting about the crowd thing. Like yeah. they can't afford to allow the public to see the crowd respond mm -hmm. because it'll blow their entire media narrative about how popular she is. Yeah. Elon Musk just did a poll where it's like 8 million people or 5 million, significant number of people. And it was like 70% Trump. Why was the polls before Trump got shot at that Kamala Harris had 27% approval rate? And why is it that all the polls that have been manufactured over the last 60 days have been, you know, Harris is right there with Trump. It's neck, neck and neck, neck. Yeah. you know, except when we run our actual polls on the internet by people like Cuban, who is a left, that poll came out. 70 30 mm -hmm. then then musk does a poll 70 30 so why are all the real polls of real people coming out 70 30 which is reflective of the polls that were made before the assassination attempt but then they're trying to feed us this line that harris is neck and neck with trump 49 48 blah 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 bro that's mm -hmm. and what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to create that perception as hard as they can up until the election to steal it What is up, guys? It's Andy Priscilla, and this is the show for the realists say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to motherfucking reality. Guys, today, we have Andy and DJ Cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for Cruise the Internet. This is where we put topics of the day up on the screen over here. We speculate on what we think is true, and we speculate on what we think is untrue. And then we talk about how we, the people, get to solve the problems that are going on in the world that we don't create, but they create. Other times in the week, we're going to have other shows, but I'm not going to go through the whole uh, intro today. We're just going to get right into it. Uh, don't forget to pay the fee. We're constantly dealing with shadow bans, traffic throttles, uh, removal of content. We talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about. So we need your support and your help to share the show. So uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's hey, up, dude? Hey, good morning. How's it going? Good. What's uh, up with you? I'm drinking my hard ass Fiji water. Pinkies up. Yeah. I was gonna say we're gonna probably get in trouble by our sponsor because you don't you don't you don't have oh. it on your desk. Yeah. I better go yell at myself. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Nothing, man. Yeah. What's up with you? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Ready yeah. for it? Yeah. Get into it. All right. Do some cruising. All right. We got some good stuff today, man. I bet we do. It's a. Uh, it <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of like what did people talk about before the world just went fucking insane yeah man fuck oh i remember i talked about making money <laughs> and it was awesome we talked all day about how to make more money and kick ass and be better and all these things and it was great and you know what happened chicks with dicks came chicks with dicks been around for a long time has it yeah thousands of years man it's not it's not a new thing that. they built the world yeah yeah that's oh yeah they built everything i forgot they built the pyramids. They built, uh, you know, they built the Great Wall of mm -hmm. China. It should be called the Great Wall of Chicks with Dicks. Mm -hmm. uh, they built all of India because we know, yeah. we know, right, Zeeshan, the Indians can't build anything. <laughs> called it sugar walls. Yeah, yeah sugar walls. <laughs> the Great Wall, sugar, great yeah, sugar yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, we know they built. Uh, you know, they built the Eiffel Tower. They built the Eiffel Tower. It was a, it was a, you know, tribute to boners. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, what else did they build? They built everything. You know what? It, you know, here, here, listen. Really, the truth is, it's not that they built everything. It's that white people didn't build anything. <laughs> they didn't do anything. It really doesn't matter. I mean, listen, easy, it do, it doesn't matter what everybody else built. the The key important point is that white people didn't do anything. Y'all lazy, bro. Why yeah. y'all so lazy? They didn't build those beautiful cathedrals all through Europe. You know, they didn't fucking Michelangelo. He was yeah, I mean, black. he yeah, uh, yeah, and trans and queer. Yes, mm -hmm. he was all the things. <laughs> you know, he was all the LGBTQ uh, B. He was the first POC. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely was not a Western white man because those they have no culture. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, uh, we made a list. We made another list. We did? We did. Did we really? I just want to say I'm proud of, of us. I'm proud of you. I always knew you could do it. Uh, please, please 
top spot domestic ter- terrorism list. No, we're not at the top yet. We're still. I mean, we're we're in that one for sure. Yeah, this is another one. Oh, um, this is Nancy. This is a uh, dumbass of the day. Let's get into it. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi uh, suggests that thirty percent of Republicans are sexist, racist, and homophobic. Hmm. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's actually low. I mean, if you, if you, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm surprised that she didn't say a hundred percent. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, because everywhere I go, everybody I know is definitely racist definitely. and sexist and definitely homophobic Br- for sure. All of the phobics, you know, they're always saying they want sandwiches and I am scared to death. Of yeah. Gay people. Huh? I said, I'm scared of gay people. I have a fear. Well, you're homophobic because you don't want to have sex with gay people. Mm. Yeah, I had I have nightmares sometimes. Yeah, that they're gonna like. Little do they know your secret. <laughs> they wouldn't call you that if they really knew you. Man, look, man. <laughs> let's, let's dive into this a little. Do bit. you think it's funny how ever you're you're a phobic or a ist for everything that you just don't want to do? Don't like, yeah. yeah, like <laughs> I'm a workout a phobic. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> you definitely ain't a sandwich phobic. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. Let's dive into this, man. So, so ex House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has suggested that thirty percent of GOP voters uh, will never back a Democratic candidate because they are sexist, racist, or homophobic. Uh, the California Dems' eyebrow-raising remark immediately drew comparisons to Hillary Clinton's infamous basket of deplorables comment targeting Donald Trump supporters and Texas GOP Senator Mitt Romney's 47% comment about Barack Obama supporters, quote, who pay no income tax. That might be factual. I, I Fact check it. I'm not 100% sure. Sounds about right. Um, Mitt Romney, you remember that when he said 47% of Barack Obama supporters don't pay income tax? Well, I mean that makes sense because they want they want your shit. I mean, it's you might have to fact check. This that. is why this is why you should not be. Listen, someone explain to me. Explain explain this to me. Why should someone have a say in the direction of the country if they aren't contributing to the country? To the direction of the country. Yeah. No, no, no. No. You can have different opinions about where you want the country to go. But if you're not paying tax, which is the piggy bank that we all pay into, how can that person be allowed to have a say in where we go? Because their interests will always be themselves and to take from the people who are paying taxes and give to themselves. Yeah. And a new study just came out uh, like today that showed that these illegal immigrants who come here from third world countries consume more tax dollars than the average person produces. So- how does that add up? So what happens? Well, then you got to print more money. And when you print more money, what happens to your money? Oh, it becomes less valuable. So they steal from you to give to the, like, dude, it's such fuckery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the average person isn't educated enough to even understand it. Like, bro, they intentionally make our citizens stupid when it comes to financial knowledge or financial intelligence so that they can do all these things and people won't notice, Mm -hmm. you know? And then when you start to understand what they're actually doing, dude, it's like, I mean, it's, it's worse than someone coming up to you and just stealing from you directly. Right. You know? Right. Right. Well, because it's legal stealing is mm -hmm. what they're setting it up to be, man. Like, it's like, I think about it like this, like, this is a different analogy to look at it. Like we're in a boat. Right. And we're like, Oh, we're going to go to this, this destination. Right. And we're rowing the boat. And then this fucking dude gets up there. He's like, no, I, I, we, we need to go here. But that motherfucker ain't got an oar in his hand. Yeah. Like, you're not even paddling. It's, it's, it's worse. Listen, dude, this is what it's really like. You, you get paid just like in the old days. You, you, you stand at the end of the, in the line. You walk up at the end of the day and the boss hands you the money for the week, right? Mm-hmm. Like 100 years ago. You walk outside in the money of the week and there's this piece of shit standing there. Okay. Who doesn't fucking do anything? They don't work. They don't. They they cause crime. They steal. They they fucking do all kinds of bad shit for our community. And then you got to take a percentage of your money and fucking just hand it to them. And by the way, that percentage is half of your money. So imagine that. 
That's what happens to all of you. You just don't think of it that way. Yeah, how long How long until you know the people that are in that pay line get out of that pay line and go join the other line? Well, that's the point. Yeah. Because they want everybody to, to join the group of non-producers because that creates dependence on the government. That is how you usher in a Communism. communist state. Yeah, man. Yeah. She said, um, back to this, though, she said, uh, quote, there are people who will never be, shall we say, inclined to support Democrats because of they just have a different orientation towards women, people of color, LGBTQ. You know, they just are not ever going to be there. Pelosi said during a Texas Tribune Festival interview Saturday while reflecting on why the 2024 presidential election is so tight. She says, continue, quote, so that's about like 30% or something like that of the Republicans, she said. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, did you see this survey that came out, though? Um, you know, police is suggesting that. Uh, this other survey came out, says, uh, survey suggests that 100% of progressive liberals are fucking faggots. Did you see that one? Did you make this up? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there it is. It's written by DJ in the New York Post. Yeah, man. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. New, new survey. Yeah. Survey says. Well, it must be true if it's on the internet. Just saying, man. All I'm saying is this. Uh, that's awful presumptuous of her to assume that all women, gay people, and people of any sort of color other than white are Democrats mm -hmm. because everybody I talk to that may not be white or may be gay or whatever else they're voting for fucking Trump. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's not racism or misogyny or anything. Here's what it is. You fuckers suck. You steal our money. You're a bunch of rich elite fuck faces that nobody believes anymore. You lied to us about everything. You lie to these people about everything and your lies are, have caught up to you. And so people don't want to vote for you. That's it. It has nothing to do with women. It has nothing to do with uh, people of color, whatever the fuck they want to call black Americans. It has to do with you and your shitty policies and people not being able to afford to fucking survive because you want to fucking flood the country with immigrants who cause crime and murder. You want to inflate the currency. You want to lock us down for two years. You want to blah, 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 blah. We could go on and on and on. Fuck. You suck. We don't like people that suck. So fuck off. That's that's pretty much it's not 30 percent either. It's like 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. And, you know, if if we're being honest, um, their definition of misogyny and uh, racism and whatever else th th we call those jokes. You know what I'm saying? Like that on our side of the fucking thing, we, we call those jokes comedy. Yeah, that's right. We Cultural, call that comedy. Culturally. We don't actually sit behind closed doors and come up with plans on how to uh, destroy black communities and then execute them. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't we don't come up with a plan like, hey, we're going to go to the black communities and we're going to talk about all this shit we're going to do. And then when we don't do it, uh, we're just going to say it's their fault and we're going to go back again and they'll vote for us again. They don't do that no. or they don't say they don't do things like, you know, um, you know, we don't do things like, hey, let's figure out a way to get the black fathers out of the homes and get the black mothers dependent on the government no. so we can ensure their vote forever. Let, let's not do, you know. Or, or release all the criminals from jails. Yeah. Uh, which increases the crime rate, defund the police. Yeah. And then make all the big businesses leave the area and then install government run grocery stores. Yeah. We, see, see, we don't do that. No. Like it's, it that has. That sounds crazy. Yeah. That doesn't have anything to do with racism or fucking misogyny, dumbass. That has to do with you guys being pieces of shit, That's it, man. okay? And your plastic ass, mannequin looking, fucking stupid ass, crusty, dusty ass, <laughs> old nasty alcoholic ass, she shut the fuck up. Nappy pussy. That's right. <laughs> I bet you smell her like you fucking smell seafood aisle of beer birds. Oh, it ain't fresh. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That ain't friendly. That's right. She she don't smell like Deerberg's. Deerberg's got Deerberg's fresh, freshest seafood in the world. She smells like the fishing dock. Mm -hmm. The bottom of it. Yeah, she looks like it too. Mm -hmm. I have a small argument to make. Okay. So she's saying that 30% of the Republican voters are sexist, racist, and homophobic. Mm -hmm. So let's take a white guy who's Republican, who's straight, supposedly not racist, and let's ask what he thinks of Biden. 
he's also democratic yeah so let's see how many people favor of biden well no we hate him too because we hate white people because we were told our whole lives that white people are the worst white devils so we hate white people too we don't even like ourselves right. dude so I, I was just hoping they're not racist you yeah. know yeah we so, are <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe yeah. she's right. Yeah, we're racist. Yeah. The yeah. fuck are you doing here, by the way? I know. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think about our dumbass of the day. With that being said, let's get into our headlines. Uh, remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyfrasella.com. You can find them all linked there. Um, so with that being said, headline number one. Headline number one reads. Embarrassing. Kamala Harris plagiarized Joe Biden's campaign policies for website. Shocking. Shocking. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign plagiarized policies from President Joe Biden's campaign website, copying and pasting onto its issues page Sunday. Uh, seven weeks after Harris entered the presidential campaign. So as Breitbart News noted, uh, Harris finally posted a set of policies on Sunday uh, after weeks of criticism uh, for not having one on her campaign website. The policies were published just 48 hours before the presidential campaign's first and likely only debate on Tuesday evening on ABC. Uh, but the New Republic, a left-wing outlet, reported Monday that several parts of of the new policy section had simply been lifted from Biden's website, even including material that called for Biden's reelection. That's how fucking dumb these people are. More importantly, that's how dumb they think you guys are. That's what it is. They think you're well, they know that they know that they know that their average voter is dumb. I'm sorry if you vote for them. You're a fucking moron. You're dumb. You you you're don't malleable. Dude, that's what it is. You're malleable and easy to manipulate yeah. because you operate on fucking feelings. And not facts. And dude, you think you know facts, but you don't know shit. You know what the fuck they tell you. And the thing, and it's very provable, man. Like you go to any one of these, <clears throat> and, and like, listen, we I, it's important to make the distinction. We're not <clears throat> talking about, you know, the good hearted Democrats. We're talking about these leftist progressive people. You go look at their fucking timeline on any of their social medias and you're going to see a paper bag floating in the fucking wind. That's yeah. what these people are. Yeah, you're going to see, you're going to see a black square. Then you're going to see... Pro COVID lockdown. Then you're going to see Ukraine mm -hmm. flags. Then you're going to see vaccine. Then you're going to see Israel flags or Palestine flags. Like, bro, what these people care about changes with the minute. And you know, it, it, like, dude, when, look at when they when they get interviewed on the street, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, how fucking uneducated their answers are. It's insane. And we're talking about the progressives. Like, dude, they know that like their people are not going to get on there and read anything about policy because they don't care about policy. Mm -hmm. They care about identity politics. They're stuck on this idea that the first is what matters. The first black woman, this, the first gay, this, that is how you lose. That's how you fucking lose. If I was running a fucking football game and the football team was called the United States of America and we had to go out and play fucking China and we had to play all these other countries and I put the first black woman out at quarterback and the first gay dude at wide receiver or fucking whatever, no, we're receiving. gonna fucking lose. Yeah, he'll be receiving. And like I don't understand I don't understand how people cannot grasp that concept. Yeah. Okay? Like we are a team, we are Team America, and we have to play the best players in the most important positions. And we don't get the luxury because things are so great here like they were 10 years ago to celebrate uh, feel-good DEI-type movements instead of just who's the best. And now, if the best happens to be a black woman, fucking right, bro. Put her in the game. If the best happens to be a gay dude, fuck, yeah, put him in the game. That motherfucker can receive the football, yeah, right? Can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, bro, we, we fucking... We, I don't, I, I don't care. Yeah. We're winners, bro. We're trying to win. And this idea of, I'm going to put this, I got to vote for her because she's a woman. I mean, dude. No. No. I think it's funny that, like, I mean, the New Republic, dude, that's a left wing outlet. Even they are calling the shit out. Um, and not just them, man. There's an interesting turn that's happening in the mainstream media anytime now it comes to Kamala, come Queen Harris. Um, do you see this? Uh, even a, a CNN segment where uh, Kamala Harris was exposed, it left the host stunned. 
she actually said she supports that? Let's dive into this a little bit. So CNN ran a segment exposing Kamala Harris, leaving host Aaron Burnett stunned. Kamala Harris finally, in the dead of the night, released a policy page on her campaign website dubbed A New Way Forward. Uh, Harris's policies are merely catchphrases. She absurdly claims she will lower taxes and secure the border. Um, but everything Kamala Harris has done over the last three and a half years while serving as vice president has destroyed the country, which is why she's trying to pivot closer to the center with her new campaign policies. However, a CNN K file investigation with Andrew uh, Kazaski exposed the real Kamala Harris and it left Aaron Burnett stunned. Andrew Kazaski obtained a 2019 ACLU questionnaire filled out by then Senator Kamala Harris and it confirmed she is a radical and anti American leftist. Let's check this clip out from CNN. Tonight, Kamala Harris releasing details of her policy positions for the first time on her campaign website. A K-file investigation has uncovered, meantime, a 2019 questionnaire. And in this questionnaire, Harris laid out some much more liberal stances, among them on immigration. So in 2019, in what K-file found, she said she would cut funding to ICE, writing, quote, our immigrant detention system is out of control, and I believe we must end the unfair incarceration of thousands of individuals, families, and children. I was one of the first senators after President Trump was elected to advocate for a decrease in funding to ICE. Well, now, of course, she's touting the Biden administration's executive order to crack down on the border. K-Files' Andrew Kaczynski joins me now. Uh, Andrew, that's pretty um, incredible on its own um, when you're talking about what you found here on ICE. What else did you find? Yeah, and this was a questionnaire that she filled out for the ACL, ACLU, and this questionnaire is really uh, an interesting snapshot in time of that 2019 Democratic primary. Uh, Kamala Harris was trying to get to the left uh, of Bernie Sanders. She was trying to get to the left of Elizabeth Warren, and you really see that in a lot of these answers, and I want to walk our viewers through a little bit of what she said. Let's just take uh, immigration and look at what she said here. She said on immigration, she made this open-ended pledge uh, to end immigrant detention. She said she supported uh, taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. She also said she Taxpayer supported... Taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. For detained migrants. She actually said she, she supported that. She wrote, both wrote and answered in the affirmative when she was asked this. Oh. And she said she also supported it uh, for federal prisoners. Now, she also pledged to slash immigration detention by 50%, close all family and private facilities, and decrease funding for ICE, and then the end uh, end, end uh, ICE detainers uh, with local law enforcement. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have that. Now there is debate um, today at the time of recording uh, to be tonight. Um, her and uh, Donald Trump will be going head to head. Um, now there's some interesting debate rules that we'll be watching tonight. Um, obviously it's a 90 minute debate with two commercial breaks. The anchors are Lindsey Davis and David Muir um, are moderating. There's no audience. OK, only the moderators will be able to ask questions. The microphones will only be live for the candidate whose turn it is to speak. There's going to be no opening statements. Um, each candidate will get two minutes to answer each question with a two minute rebuttal. Um, there's a one minute for a follow up and clarification or response. Uh, there was a coin flip that was done um, and Trump selected to give the last closing statement. Um, Harris will be on the right side of your TV screens. Um, there's going to be no props, no pre-written notes. Um, each uh, candidate will have a pen, a pad of paper, and a bottle of water. Um, and more importantly, campaign staff will not coach candidate during the commercial breaks. Um, so that's an interesting setup. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. Um, it's interesting about the crowd thing. Like, yeah. they can't afford to allow the public to see the crowd respond mm -hmm. because it'll blow their entire media narrative about how popular she is. Yeah. Elon Musk just did a poll where it's like 70%, it was like 8 million people or 5 million, oh, significant number of people. And it was like 70% Trump. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, that dude, that's the, what the true water. Bro, is. and it was, it, who else did that? Cuban did that. Cuban did that. He and was it was 70% something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Man. Why, why is it, why was, why was the polls before Trump, uh, you know, got shot at? That Kamala Harris had 27% approval rate. That's almost 30. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll call that 30. And why is it that all the polls that have been manufactured over the last 60 days have been 
you know, Harris is right there with Trump. It's neck, neck and neck, neck. Yeah. you know. Except when we run our actual polls on the internet, where people and by by people like Cuban, who is a left, mm -hmm. okay, You're one of their puppets. That's right. I, you know, unfortunately, you know, I've always enjoyed Mark Cuban. I respect him as an entrepreneur, but I think he's super off base with his political views. I think he's looking for big business and and not caring about the middle class worker at all. That's my opinion. Um, I don't know him personally. I haven't talked to him, but he's a fucking leftist right now. And that poll came out 70-30. Mm -hmm. then, then Musk does a poll, 70-30. So why are all the real polls of real people coming out 70-30, which is reflective of the polls that were made before the assassination attempt, but then they're trying to feed us this line that Harris is neck and neck with Trump, 49-48, blah, blah, blah. Bro, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to create that perception as hard as they can up until the election to steal it. Right. Because gonna, if they can get everybody to believe that, hey, well, it was a close election. Yes, it's not close. No, it's, it's not, not close. close at all. It's a and it's very important that people know that it's not close. Yeah. Yeah, but more importantly, dude, like, people have to fucking vote. Um, and it's super important, man, because, you know, on this topic, there was just this, uh, this headline just came out today. Report. More than 140,000 Wisconsinites can vote in the 2024 election without proving their identity by self-identifying as indefinitely confined. A new report by the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty reveals through the loophole, voters can receive an absentee ballot indefinitely without ever showing an ID. The indefinitely confined exception has skyrocketed, interestingly enough, since 2016 when approximately 66,000 voters registered under the status. In 2020, amid the pandemic, 265,000 registered under the exemption. When clerks in Democratic strongholds encouraged voters to exploit the loophole to circumvent Wisconsin's voter ID requirements in 2020, a practice later rebuked unanimously by the Supreme Court. Uh, Joe Biden, just to remind you guys, uh, defeated Donald Trump allegedly in that state by just 20,000 votes all right, in a swing of around 48,000 votes to Democrats from the 2016 election when Trump carried the state. So in 2020, he won just by 20,000 votes. And now we have an additional 140,000 that require no ID. Now, what have they been pumping into this country? Immigrant, illegal immigrants. And, and who says voter IDs races? The left. And then now we have a state, a very important state, mind you, with more than 140,000 people that can vote in these elections without even proving their identity at all. Huh. You know, but it, it, dude, it's 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 crazy to me that people can support a party that is willing to blatantly cheat and go against what the constitution of this country and what the majority of the people in this country want. You know what I'm dude, saying? Insane. That's insane, dude. It's insane. And, 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 and dude, what, you know, they're doing this in Ohio, too. They're pumping mm -hmm. people in, trying to flip that state through illegal votes. And, dude, this is, if you're not a citizen of this country, how the fuck can you vote in our election? It makes no sense. But it's also why there's another report that just came out today. Um, to no surprise, Republicans are more likely to trust Trump than official election results. By a whopping, whopping number. Um, and this was an AP Newark USA facts poll that was done. Um, Republicans Trump tr uh, trust Trump most on election outcomes um, to the tune of if you poll Republicans, almost 70 percent say they trust Trump over your local TV news, government certifications of elections, local newspaper, cable news, national TV networks, um, social media. I mean, all of that. And you poll Democrats. And Democrats, uh, almost at 75 percent, are going to trust their local TV ne news networks uh, for their election results. You see the difference here. There's a much more stronger uh, trust in propaganda machine and mainstream media um, when you deal with those progressive lefts. Um, so it's interesting, man. But the bottom line on my, on my side, Andy, we, we people have to vote. We can't, yeah. we can't take shit for granted. Can't trust you. It. Can you get everybody you know to vote. Everybody. Because they're going to cheat. They are going to cheat hard. All right, they're already lining it up. Didn't Trump say something about putting people in prison for life that cheat in the election? 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I thought he you said should. he made a statement. Dude, you listen, should. I think it should be worse than that. I don't think it should be life in prison. You I don't want to fucking pay. Bro, the fact that these people are willing to legitimately ruin the country, that's a revolution that's happening. It's a color revolution. And the, the just because they're not running in with guns and, and this and that doesn't mean they're not attacking our country. Bro, the fact that they put her in as the Democrat candidate with zero votes and 27 percent approval rating thinking that they can get her to win think about that like that alone is a threat to our democracy think about that they she was 27 percent approval rating and and they they decided that they would have a better chance with her winning than biden winning because they thought they could pump her up close enough to cover the gap the fact about biden's rating the fact that the fact that these people that it's no like think about this the fact that it's normalized that there is a gap that these people cheat with is absurd mm-hmm. it's absurd and the, like dude when you look at kamala's face and all these democrats face and these people have no problem stealing our country from us legitimately like what's what they want they want to stay in power they want to keep their jobs they want to they don't care that the people are suffering they don't care that the people are you know having trouble paying their bills or getting by they don't care about the crime that's happening with these migrants they don't care all they care about is themselves and i'm going to tell you something if that debate goes real bad for them tonight which i'm sure it will we're going to see a big black swan event we're going to see some sort of massive 9-11 world changing type event between now and uh and the election because that's going to be their last hope guys jump in on this conversation let us know what you guys think down in the comments with that being said andy let's go cruise some of these I got some cool ones for you guys today let's go cruise the comments um this first one comes from joe uh joe bell joe 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 bell zero zero he says uh damn I almost wish Trump would win just so this dude will shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's pretty good. You're changing people's mind, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> whatever it takes. You're still watching, though, aren't you? Hey. Yeah. Hey. Look at his look at his profile picture. <laughs> that guy, that guy, that guy is in his basement right now, munching a fucking hot pocket that his mom made for him while he typed that. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. Mom, it's too hot. I told you 45 seconds, not a minute. 45 seconds, mom. Gosh. <laughs> this is the same guy that's like Huh? That guy? No, he's not avocado toast. No, he's all the toast. No, that guy's no. That guy is You know what? I promised I was going to be nice today. <laughs> yeah, he's he might vote for Trump. You know what? Welcome to the team. Yeah, hey. But here's the problem. I won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's the problem. I love it. Uh, this last comment, quickly, this last comment comes from uh, Bo Thompson, 8413. Uh, he says, uh, when Andy is president in 2028, will we get real AF episodes from the Oval Office? Yes. Bro, that'd be badass. Yeah. That'd yes. be so badass. That's going to be our our pipeline to the people. Bro, that'd be fucking sick. Yeah. And not like the fake Oval Office that they use. Like no, the, the real, real one. Like the, the yeah. Resolute Desk. Yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. Yep. That'd be fucking sick, though. Yeah. That'd be sick. Yep. I'm excited. It's gonna be. Yeah. Guys, we appreciate you for being real-ass fans. Thank you for liking and commenting. Make sure you guys hit subscribe and hit that bell notification on the YouTube to stay up to date with the latest episodes from Real AF. With that being said, let's keep this cruise moving. Headline number two. Well, headline number two reads... Springfield, Ohio, residents say Haitian migrants crashing cars, spiking insurance, eating ducks from parks. Now, this is interesting. All right. Uh, let's, let's dive into this. So the government's delivery of roughly 20,000 migrants to Springfield, Ohio, has been a boon for real estate, local employers, auto salesmen, merchants, and the migrants, but also an unwanted shock to locals as they try to manage their own community. Uh, The damage was displayed at the August 27th City Commission meeting where voters presented their concerns about the migrants. Quote, 
Maybe we should open up go-kart land again so that people can have a chance to learn how to drive without being on these public streets, longtime resident Jeffrey Allen told the mayor and four other commissioners. Quote, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. Anthony Harris, who describes himself as a local YouTube influencer, hey, that's us, uh, told the council, quote, these Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're flipping cars in the middle of the street. I hate the traffic concerns that you all see, Mayor Rob Sue said later in the meeting. Um, And it's interesting, dude, because, you know, one thing specifically um, has been this note about ducks and cats being uh, killed, hunted and killed by these Haitian uh, illegal uh, migrants. And the most interesting thing happened. My ducks would kill them. Because I raise battle ducks. (laughs) Yeah, my ducks are battle ducks. They're born and bred for action. Mm-hmm. I teach them aquatic survival yep. every single day. I teach them how to march. I teach them how to bite and attack. <laughs> they go right for the balls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it, bro. Yeah. You don't fuck with my ducks. My ducks will eat you, bro. They are big too, bro. I teach them to go straight after the Haitians. They're a bunch of little racist ducks. I was wondering why they always got weird around me. Yeah. like I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> you know... It is what there's some there's some collateral damage there, bro. Chase me and Blake, yeah. man. Like what's yeah. the problem? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the end. Most- I always wonder why Blake stayed away from there. <laughs> 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 the most interesting thing happened, man. So you know, there was all of these. Uh, you know, the the city council, um, some government officials locally. They all got on this narrative that. Uh, there is no such thing happening that ducks are not being decapitated. There's pictures of it. No, Andy. No, that's that's Russian disinformation. Oh, must be AI. That's not happening. Okay. Okay. Ducks are not being decapitated and and killed and, and, and hunted and cats are not being, you know, hung up and carved by trees dressed in the front yard. of. It's not happening. Okay. And we know it's true because our city officials told us so. Um, but the problem, there, there's literally pictures, there's videos of these things happening. So who do we believe? Well, um, you don't believe your eyes. Definitely like don't George believe George Orwell eyes. said. Don't believe your eyes. Yeah. Don't do it. Um, but thankfully Elon Musk, uh, dropped some truth bombs with an epic tweet about Haiti cannibal gang after billionaire Vinod Kosla, uh, tries to deny shocking report on Haitians eating cat. In Ohio, Um, Elon Musk has once again made waves with hard hitting tweets in response to a recent controversy brewing in Springfield, Ohio. The issue allegations that Haitian immigrants overwhelmed by the border crisis have been engaging in disturbing acts of animal cruelty, including the consumption of pets and wildlife in the area. Billionaire Vinod uh, Kosla, founder of Kosla Ventures, Attempted to dismiss these troubling reports that recently surfaced, but Musk fired back with explosive comments. Um, As reported by the Gateway Pundit, outraged citizens in Springfield, Ohio, confronted their city officials during a recent city commission meeting, accusing them of turning a blind eye to disturbing crimes alleging uh, allegedly being committed by Haitian migrants in their town. Uh, Testimonies from local residents were shocking, with one individual claiming to have witnessed Haitians grabbing up ducks by their necks, decapitating them, and walking off with them to eat. Um, so Vinod, he posted this um, with that, that same trigger word that they all been using. Uh, Weird! J.D. Vance repeats baseless claim Haitian immigrants are eating pets as Ohio officials say there is no evidence. There's no evidence of that. Well, Elon Musk responded with a body cam clip uh, from officers in Springfield, Ohio, who was called uh, to this apartment complex. Let's just watch the clip and let's check out this uh, baseless claim uh, of no evidence. What did you do? Why'd you kill the cat? Smile for me. Smile, what did you do? Go like this. Did you eat that cat? Did you eat it? No, why'd you kill it? Did you guys see all this? No, we pulled up and she was just laying there with me. Did you see her eating it? Eating it. She was eating it? Yeah, yeah. she was. 
Can you call the Humane Society to see if they'll come pick those cat up? It's deceased. Baseless claims. Yeah. No, no. They're all lying. They Listen, lying. here's what it is. Those black people uh-huh. who they just asked if another black person was eating the cat, they were lying because they're racist. It's black on black lies. Black on black racism, mm-hmm. which we know is a real thing because DJ. I'm the king of it. <laughs> I'm, the, I, I'm the uncle of it. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Well, here's the most interesting thing. I mean, this is, it's kind of beautiful, actually. Um, yeah, not beautiful. Listen, obviously, ducks and cats. I mean, well, I'll draw the line at ducks, cats. Eh. All right. But it's fucked up. It's disgusting shit. Okay. And you would eat a cat? Yeah. It must be that Haitian in you. I eat cat all the time. Ah! Meow. Meow, meow, meow. But uh, the most interesting thing, That's man. That's stir-fried meow, meow right there. I'm just saying. Yeah. How, how do you know? You don't. How do you know? Meow. Um, but there's been a shit ton of memes coming out about this shit that I think is just fucking beautiful. Um, epic memes emerge online following reports of cat and bird eating Haitian immigrants in Ohio, causing liberals to lose their minds. Um, and so there's been a bunch, a shit ton, actually. Um, even the House Judiciary Committee uh, for the GOP, um, they posted this on Twitter um, saying, protect our ducks and kittens in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> to which, to which. uh Democrats are losing their fucking minds because of this picture right here. Why? Uh, well, I'll show you why. Here's Eric Swalwell, swallower of Chinese spies. Um, here is his reaction um, to this tweet that he calls out in open sense. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> what in the hell is this? <laughs> the chairman tweets protect our ducks and kittens in Ohio because he goes some down, goes down some crazy rabbit hole completely debunked that aliens are eating pets I hope you called him an alien oh my god are you okay mr chairman because last year for a very long time you tweeted and promoted kanye west as he was calling for genocide against the jews and you kept it up and now when we have victims coming here you're tweeting this nonsense oh my god i'm I, so distraught. i don't know why you would do this I hope you're okay. I don't know if the the aliens who are eating your ducks are in the room with us right now, but Mr. Chairman, this is a serious issue. These people have loved ones who have been lost, and you tweeted this. That was the fakest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, go to acting class, bro, if you're going to fucking act. Yeah, Chinese acting class. Bro. (laughs) <laughs> are you okay i hope you're okay are they are the aliens in the room with you now no they're in ohio eating the fucking ducks asshole yeah yeah no shit um but there's been a bunch of these uh that have come out uh ai for the for the kind of win i guess on this check this out <laughs> save the cats vote for trump uh there's another one here maga cats fight 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, here's another one. Uh, not to worry. FBI is handling it. They arrest the cats. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what it is? The cats are racist for not letting themselves get eaten. That's what it is. Yeah, they're bro. Haitian, they're, 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 hate, they're racist against the Haitians. Bro, and they're, they're misogynist, too, yep. because they won't make themselves into a sandwich. Uh, I like this one. Masca. Make America's cats safe again. <laughs> Man, they didn't do Trump very, very solid there, bro. No. They put an extra 30 on him. Do you see what's chasing him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. These fucking people don't belong here. No, they don't. Yeah, and they need to go back where the fuck they came from. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. But don't believe your eyes, folks. Yeah, yeah. and by the way, this is what you get when you you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and you try to pretend like everybody's this good-hearted normal human being who is just like you and they just want they just want what you have and they want to be safe and this and that and this okay well is it worth your safety Mm. is it worth your ability to provide for your family are you going to give up all your comfort for these people because i can respect that 
if you're one of those people. But the problem is none of these people are those people, right? They all voted for this shit because AOC went down and fucking pretended like there was a bunch of stuff going on at the border. They called it racist. These people are so insecure about being racist that they'll support anything that says it's not racist. You understand what I'm saying? These people are so afraid of being called racist because secretly they are. They secretly believe that people that aren't white or aren't like them are low IQ, dumb motherfuckers, and they don't want to expose themselves. So any anti-racist narrative, even if it hurts them, they will support. And so they made up this fake racist narrative about the border, which, bro, why why do we have borders anywhere then? If, if it, you know, like... This is a country. This is our country. We th- we pay for this country. The reason you got fence on your house. And Correct. The front door with the right. Truck. That's right. And these people have cornered themselves now because mm-hmm. now it's admit that you caused a problem and solve it or give up your comfort and give up your safety and give up your ability to survive to prove that you are not a racist human being. So they're in a corner. Dude, and that's the crazy Like how do you defend how do you defend this if you're them? Well that's my that's my thing. It's like, you know, this 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 one person who quoted Maybe we should open up go kart land again so they can learn No. Maybe maybe, we should gather them up and and get them the fuck out. That's right. How about that? Yeah. But yet you want to spend more tax dollars so so that we could teach them how to fucking drive on a go like that's your solution, a go kart track. How about we go kart their ass the fuck out of this country? That's right. I mean, like, dude, it makes no, like, listen, if somebody, if you have, you have, everybody has it. Hey, listen, this Jeffrey Allen, is that the guy, the video with the guy, a different, different guy? Different okay. Guy. You know, but like, it makes, no, like, like, to me, it's no different. Like, you have a house, you have a front door on your house, you have a lock on your front door, you have a Why? alarm system. Why do you have a lock on your front door? To keep people out of your house. What are you, racist? Well, no, I mean, I just want to be safe, right? What, what do you, what do you, what I'm you don't, yeah, you don't want people to come in your house? No. Like, it's so funny, dude, how these people who vote for this shit, because, it's like karma, really. Like, we're at a point now where, you know, the people who vote Democrat are either very, very, very low income people in the inner cities, or they're upper middle class white voters, or they are elite billionaire white voters. Mm-hmm. The elite billionaire white voters don't give a fuck because n- it's never going to touch it. them. Right. And that's the problem I have with it. Okay. But here's the, here's the thing it's karma, dude, because the inner city black community who have voted for this shit just because someone screamed racism without digging into it are now having to deal with these people in their neighborhood they don't like it no okay and then the upper middle class white women are starting to get harassed and they're starting to have things happen to them and they're starting to realize oh shit this is a problem because they voted for it right so until it touches people until it affects their lives they are all idealistic and they are all about it, but all these people are liars and frauds because if they really stood for what they voted for and what they say they stood for, they'd welcome these people into their homes, which they are not doing. Bro, I forget the uh, the guy the guy's name, uh, but he like did a street interview. He goes on the street and yeah. he went up to people and I was like, "Hey, are you for or against immigration?" Oh, I'm definitely for. I was like, "Okay, well, how many people can you house?" Yeah. Oh, well, no, I can't house anybody. That's I, right. Like. No, don't change it. And like, that's my only issue with this. Like, yeah, it, it definitely is karma. But here's the problem. Like, I'm having to suffer for your karma. Yeah. And maybe not today, but it's fucking coming. Yeah. It's coming. And like, the problem is if, if it was just them that had to deal with that karma. Okay, cool. The problem is, is that it, the shit is not just going to stop in the inner cities. No. It's not just going to stop in the world. It's not just going to stop in fucking El Paso. It's going to expand and fucking ripple out over the entire fucking country. Yeah. And these people are in for a rude awakening because they think they're going to be able to go out in their front yard and negotiate with these people. These people will break in your house and take your shit, rape your daughters, and not give two fucks about it. I am the captain. You don't fucking get it. Mm -hmm. And dude, a lot of these people, they're going to have to learn the hard way. And we're going to have to get back to, we are Americans and they are not. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, left, right, straight, gay, whatever. We are Americans. They are not. This is for Americans. This is not for them. Mm -hmm. Their country is called this. It's Haiti or it's over in Africa or it's in South America or it's in Asia and they got a country. Okay. This isn't the mother homeless shelter for everybody's fucking shit bags. Sorry. Oh, what do you, how do you know they're shit bags? Well, why don't their own countries want them? Right. It's very simple. It's very simple. You know, for anybody that's pro immigration, if they somehow listen to this show, 
tonight when you guys go to sleep, I want you to leave your front door, your back door, and your windows wide the fuck open. Wide open. Leave them open. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. Why would I? Now, why the fuck would we leave our border like that? Dude, listen. These people are liars. They're, 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 ideolo- they're ideological liars. They, they, it's like when uh, Aaron Elmore was on the show and we were talking to her and she said they're trying to out-liberal each other. Out-virtue each other. That's yeah. what they're doing. They're trying to out-virtue signal each other and they will, they're the biggest liars in the country because they will not do any of the shit that they vote for. They, you're not housing these people. No. You're not feeding them your cat. You're not leaving your doors open. Yeah. Like, bro, you, you guys are liars and you need to quit voting for this shit because now it's going to fuck up your shit. Do you remember like three, it was probably three years ago, four years ago when I was saying, hey, look what's going on in Europe. You're going to want these, pe- these people are going to come in here and they're going to rape your daughters and they're going to fucking rape you. And they're going to, now how many fucking rapes have we heard of? How many murders have we heard of? I, one, I told, one is too many. Listen, bro, I told people what was going to happen, and now it's happening. Much like almost everything we've said on the show. Like, dude, I don't fucking miss. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think about this. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Uh, headline number three reads. I get tired of telling people all of this shit, bro, Like, and, and it happening. And like I, I told you this last night. Mm-hmm. Like, I the we recorded a whole show yesterday. And we didn't air it because I got so pissed off because like, dude, I feel like I have to come on here every day and just be like, I fucking told you this already. I told you this already. I told you this already. Like, it's so frustrating for me to be and you to be able to see what the fuck is going on, tell people what's going on and then have them sit there and wait for it to happen until they're like, oh, you fucking right. At what point in time are 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 we going to start being like, damn, all right, well, that makes a lot of sense. We should fucking do something about that. Mm-hmm. You know? It's because people keep waiting for someone to ride in and lead them when they are the leader. Like, you are the leader, bro. It's you. You see what's going on. You think that I'm going to come in and save. I'm not coming to your fucking neighborhood to save your shit. You understand what's going on. You're choosing to stay quiet. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We have in it. We have, we have people that could lead, but they won't lead because they think someone else is leading. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're waiting on it. What do you what do you what do you want somebody to do? You want somebody to ride into your neighborhood and fix all your shit for you? Of course you do. That's not how it works. That's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah, that is. That's exactly That's why we're fucking here, man. Well, guys, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Our headline number three reads. Georgia school got even earlier warning about Colt Gray before deadly shooting, mom says. Uh, Let's dive into this. The mother of Georgia school shooting suspect Colt Gray claimed that teachers had noticed her son was making references to violence at the school, even before she called to warn administrators about him. Quote, the counselor said, I wanted to let you know that earlier this morning, one of Colt's teachers had sent me an email saying Colt had been making references to school shootings. Marcy Gray told ABC News in a video interview from home. Authorities said Colt Gray opened fire about 30 minutes after his mother's warnings. The school said resource officers tried to track down Colt, but stopped a different student instead. Now, speaking of the two students and two teachers killed in the massacre, Marcy Gray told the network during the emotional interview, if, quote, if I could have taken their place, I would. I would in a heartbeat. Uh, between my gut feelings, the text messages, and now this email, you need to, like, run to the classroom, she said. Uh, that's what she told the school. When 30 she minutes before he started shooting. 30 minutes before. Um, and so another update in the situation, Georgia, uh, Georgia school shooting suspect Colt Gray's dad called him a sissy and bought him an AR-15 to toughen him up, relatives say. The father of accused Georgia school shooter Colt Gray believed that his 14-year-old son was too gentle and bought him the AR-15 style rifle in an attempt to, quote, toughen him up, a relative claims. Colin Gray gave his troubled son the assault rifle for Christmas, the weapon that Colt ended up using in last Wednesday's bloodbath at Appalachie High School that left two teens and two teachers dead, authorities have said. Uh, But it was the way Colin spoke to his son that raised the eyebrows of concerned family members. Uh, Quote, he would call Colt names to his face, says a relative of Colt's mother, Marcy. Uh, Quote, names that no boy wants to hear. Sissy, 
pussy, bitch, just names that were meant to break him down and emasculate him. The relative addict, quote, Colin always thought that Colt was too gentle and tender. That's why I believe he gave him the rifle. Um, now, with all of that being said, another report comes out um, now almost a week after that incident um, that the Georgia gunman Colt Gray was ridiculed and called gay by bullies at the school. Um, details continue to flood in about the troubled life of Colt Gray, the 14 year old accused of killing four of his teachers and classmates in a mass shooting at Georgia High School on Wednesday. The teen's dad, 54 year old Colin Gray, told officers in an interview last year that his son was often picked on by bullies who touch him, pinch him, and taunt him. Quote, Colt's gay, his father said they would call out. The elder Gray's interview with police came uh, just after his son threatened to shoot up his middle school last year in a post shared on the messaging app Discord. Quote, he's going through a lot, his dad said to a deputy at the time, according to a police transcript obtained by the Daily Beast. Quote, he just wants us to have a simple life. It was very difficult for him to go to school and not get picked on. Uh, the teen's dad said Colt's bullies, quote, ridicule, ridiculed him day after day. The father added, quote, I worry about him in school and, you know, uh, what would ever happen. Colt Gray, who is, uh, will be prosecuted as an adult, faces four counts of felony murder with additional charges still pending. Um, Colin Gray, the father, has been charged um, and arrested. Uh, with involuntary manslaughter, two counts of second-degree murder, and eight counts of cruelty to children, which could send him away for as long as 180 years under Georgia law. Uh, Andy, what do we got on all this? You know, I, I don't know. It sounds like he had a shitty dad. Lots of people have shitty dads. Lots of people have dads that do fucked up shit. Lots of people have stepdads that do fucked up shit and call them names and fucking threaten them and bully them. And, you know, I mean, this is this is not... Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, this is not rare. Uh, there's lots of shitty people that shouldn't have kids. And, you know, I can I can empathize with that. Um, but those a lot of those most of those people don't go shoot other people or shoot up schools or kill innocent people and all this. And like, you know, this kid deserves the fucking wood chipper, bro. Like he just does. He fucking killed four innocent people. I don't really give a fuck why he did it or what happened to him or who called him names. I don't care. There's been all kinds of things that have happened to me that I could fucking, in fact, I don't even talk about a lot of the shit that's happened to me because I don't want to sound like a bitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we could go down the roster of everybody in this building. There's 400 people here and we could ask them about all the shittiest shit that they've had. And we'd have a long list of shitty shit that's happened to them. And a lot of it would come from parents. Okay. Uh, still doesn't excuse what he did. I, you know, it's not the father's quote unquote fault. Uh, you know, the kid snapped and fucking it is what it is. You know, now should the father be held accountable? I don't know. Maybe I don't know what the fuck he did. Uh, but at the end of the day, bro, we live in a country where people are responsible for their individual actions and it shouldn't matter why, you know, we talk so much about why things happen. We talk so you know, we, we empathize with criminals and we give them excuses and we make outs and we talk about the trauma and we talk about what about the trauma of all those families that just lost four innocent people because this kid was a fucking douchebag. What about their trauma? What? Yeah, no shit. What about the fact that, you know, uh, four families are pretty much ruined because of what this, this kid did like, and, and we have all these people trying to drum up sympathy for this kid. This kid's a piece of shit. And sorry, to, like, I don't believe, listen, I'm not one of these idealistic people. Like, I don't believe in people that are bad people. Like, I don't look at people and say, oh, well, I'm sure they could be a good person. I don't do that. Like, I look at people for what the fuck they are. That's a bad kid. And that's a bad parent. And, you know, whatever needs to happen, happen. Like, dude, real talk in my America, that kid would be publicly executed for what he did. I And, and not not hung and not shot. Like he would be dismembered. And the reason for that is so that other people knew that when you shoot up a school, that's, that's what would happen to you. And yeah, people man. would stop shooting up schools. You know, unfortunately, we, we live in a time in history where people haven't been held accountable publicly because we have all these soft hearts and all these people that say it's cruelty and shit. No shit. It's supposed to be cruel. It's supposed to be cruel. It, it, for 12,000 years. People have been publicly dealt with to keep people from doing fucked up shit. This is no different. And just because it's been 
a hundred years since we've really had that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. And, and that's, if we want to, if we want to re- restore civility in this country, violent criminals that do things like shoot up schools, that murder people, that rape people and do this shit should be dealt with publicly in a very harsh way. And if you do that, crime will go down. I don't, I don't really understand how, how people can't understand that argument. And I don't, it's not cruel. What's cruel is what happens to the victims. And nobody talks about that, man. No, they don't care. Nobody talks about that. And I think too, man, like, I don't know. I mean, I think we talked about this with uh, Duke. You know, like, like there is, there, like, I mean, people may not like this, but it's the fucking truth. There is a, there is a great benefit to getting bullied because it gives you two fucking options. You could either become something that you don't want to get bullied for anymore. You can become fucking better. You can rise up. You can get better. You can, you know, do some crazy cool shit. Right. Or you have the other option where you succumb to that shit, bro. And you end up doing what the fuck this dude just I did. got bullied my whole I was life, bullied. dude. I was bullied until I got to be probably a freshman in high school. I was bullied my entire life. And then I was bullied in high school. But the difference between high school, it, I got bigger than everybody. And I started beating people's asses. 100 percent. Yeah. Bro. And like, dude, once I beat a couple asses, guess what happened? Bullying stopped. It did stop. And not only did it stop, I became somebody that other people looked up to because I stood up for people that got fucked with. Mm-hmm. So, oh, dude, same exact thing. Yeah. Man. Like a lot of people may not know this. I used to be a dancer. Yeah, you know I know what I'm that. saying like you know Twinkle that. Toes DJ. No, but like 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 legitimately like classically trained in dancing. You know what I'm saying? Had scholarships and all of this shit. Yeah, performed and all. Of, like I mean, I was and I was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I think I was right in the middle school, like seventh eighth grade. Man, one of the production managers. I, I will never forget her fucking name. Her name. I'll say her name. She's dead now, I believe. At least maybe. Well, it's probably because of karma. Probably because um, she called you fat. Yeah, she said. I, she said I would never make it as a professional dancer because I started picking up some weight. Well, you should have yeah. stuck with it because now being fat's awesome. You get a you get a pass to the front. You'd be on fucking Broadway right now, bro. Yeah, no shit. It's healthy. No, then I'll be on the fucking magazine saying this shit's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. No, man, but I, t- I took that fucking pain. Like, that shit hurt. You know what I'm bro. saying? You tell 11-year-old little kid that shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But bro. I took that. Yeah. And I fucking went to the football field and started laying motherfuckers out. Yeah. And I put her face on every fucking opponent that I had, and I fucking dominated this yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't have to shoot up. A Listen, f- dude, bullying. There's a place for it. There man. is a place for it. Bullying and shaming prevent behavior that is not acceptable in civilization. Right. That's I it. Mean, and, like, listen, and accountability. Listen. And dude, like, real talk. People don't understand this. Men operate on a pecking order of violence. That's just fucking reality. A perceived. Perceived. A potential bil- violence. Correct. Yeah. Like when I'm talking to another man, I automatically know. And it doesn't matter if it's someone who's 5'7 or someone who's 6'8. I know that if I say the wrong thing, there's potential for violent confrontation. Mm -hmm. That means there's an, amongst most men that are above the age of probably 30, there is a natural respect uh, to other men. And the reason we have that natural respect to other men is because we know that if we say the wrong thing, we might have to. violently have a confrontation which doesn't mean we're going to lose right but like nobody likes to have a violent confrontation unless you're totally fucked in the brain it's not that fun yeah, it just comes down to how bad you want to fucking say it correct and <laughs> and dude this is why and this is reality and how bad you don't hold hear on it. <laughs> this is why you have so many women start all these fights with men because women don't live in that same structure no. so when they start running their mouths and all this then they pull some dude into the fight and th- honestly dude this is a big problem in the black community this is why a lot of black dudes get fucking killed because the the, the women start the shit and then the mm-hmm. black guys end up getting shot for it yep. but we see this in all areas of society there the women have no structure about they have no fear of violence because violence has never been bestowed on them in that way. And all men, they have restraint with what they say and what they do because they understand like, fuck dude. All right. I I'm pissed at this dude, but am I pissed enough to get in a fight or am I pissed enough to get shot? Right. Am I pissed enough to where I have to handle this, you know, meaning physically. And we think about those things and, and women don't think about those things. They don't think about it. And neither do these young men, these younger men who are under 25 years old, they, they, when I was growing up, you, you got in fist fights and then that was that, like you went out in the parking lot and you fucking fought it out. And that was that bro. And sometimes most of the time you ended up with respect for the other person. You're like, all right, you good. Yep. I'm good. And then you went on and, 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 uh, a, a hierarchy a fucking chat bond. Board. Yeah, bro. A bond is formed through that. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, we lost something in society when people started getting arrested for simple uh, fist fighting. Just being real. 100%, man. And I'll say this too. You don't feed into the fucking, you know, like look, you're, you're being bullied because allegedly they called you gay. You know, everybody gets called gay. I'm just saying, but like dyeing your hair fucking yellow, yellow probably doesn't help that. Well, I mean, dude, but these kids Fuck. are, I know, but bro, remember what these kids are told. They're told growing up. Listen, man, this is the whole problem. These kids are told growing up things that are not true about society. They aren't told the reality. They aren't told, hey, man, the world sucks and people are mean and they're not going to fucking like you no matter how perfect you present yourself to be. You can be jacked. You could be tan. You could be wealthy. You could have all your shit together. And there's going to be people that just fucking hate you. You, you grow your hair uh, yellow. They're going to hate you. You shave your head. They're going to hate you. You fucking you're a little too fat. They're going to talk shit. The world talks shit no matter what, right? And you have to develop a, a, a thick enough skin to operate in the world. And so they tell these kids growing up that- It's not like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They tell these kids growing up that you could be whatever you want. You can wear whatever you want. You could be a girl. You could be a boy. You could grow your hair. You could color it this way. You could wear it blue. You could wear it pink. You can get 500 piercings in your fucking face. You can get your face tattooed. And if the world treats you wrong, then it's the world's fault. While that might be true that the it, it, the world's fault, that doesn't prepare the young person for the reality that the world is a very harsh place. So when the person gets out into the real world, which our first experience typically of this is in high school, mm -hmm. we find out real quick what's acceptable and what's not. You know what I mean? Right. So like, dude, the parents and the teachers are telling these kids idealistic shit that isn't true about the world. This is the same reason why kids that come out of high school or come out of college are ineffective in the workforce. They come in, they have this dream about, you know, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to make a million dollars a fucking year tomorrow. And, you know, then then they, they come in, they're ineffective. They think it's supposed to be, you know, this easy thing where they show up at fucking nine and they leave at four and they make a gazillion dollars and they don't have to really contribute. They just have to show up like these. The world will stomp on your fucking throat, dude. And we need to be teaching our kids and preparing our kids for that, not preparing our kids for this utopia that doesn't exist that when they find out it doesn't exist, they snap and go crazy, which is what happened here, Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, and honestly, I'm, I'm starting to even think a little bit more, too, on the dad, bro, because, I mean, fuck, like, you got you got a son. You know, I don't, I don't know if this is his only son or what, but fuck, I mean, he's getting bullied for being gay. Yeah, let's try to toughen him up. You know, I'm not, I'm not I don't even, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that wasn't the well, case. Buying a, gun buying a gun doesn't make someone tough. No, I'm saying, but, like, I mean, he's taking him hunting and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, well, I mean, is the kid, is the kid gay? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah. is this dad, did this dad have a gay kid and now he's, like, being a fucking dick? Kind of beat the gay out of him? Yeah, that's right. That's like, bro, you know, like, look, man, I, you know, who knows? But it doesn't matter. That's the point. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He killed him because he had something going on. Bro, fuck that kid. He needs to go in the fucking wood chipper. For real. It's real, man. That's real, guys. Oh, my fucking, bro, Listen. And I guarantee you there's people right now that are like, oh, oh, sounds like someone who grew up with a perfect family. Listen, dude, there's a lot of shit in everybody's family, okay? And not everybody wants to go and fucking tell their whole fucking story about their fucking family because they don't want to embarrass people. They don't want to, fucking, you know, sound like they're crying or making excuses. We could find a fucking shit wrong with everybody's fucking family. No, that I'm talking about don't change it. Shit's already happened. Bro, got to deal with There's it. dude, there's <laughs> five dudes I'm looking at in this room that got harder family stories than that guy. You know what I'm saying? This guy's full like fuck this guy. Yeah. Yeah, guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Uh with that being said, let's get to our final segment of the show, Andy. Thumbs up or dumb as fuck. Um this is where we bring a headline in, we talk about it to get one of those two options. Now, Andy, um early days of business. You used to work at a bar. Mm -hmm. Right, um, you used to work at a bar. You know what I'm saying. You'd have to work to make, kind of help make, make ends meet and shit and fund mm -hmm. the business, right? Did you guys have any special like shot rituals or anything? You guys? Oh did? fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah, bro. All kinds. Like any 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 special one off the top? Of your well, head? the 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 house shot, the one that we all did, was just Ruppelmans. 
Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but then we had Willie had this one. It was called Slick Willie. Okay. Uh, we all had like our own. We had this thing called a Sunday special, which mm. was uh, Smirnoff Ice with flavored vodka. Mm. Yeah, that's it's just, huh? We, that's, that sounds. Uh. It'll fucking cure a hangover <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah, we, we had one because uh, you know, I worked in the bar industry as well. We had one that's called the Last Call Shot. Yeah. So like you know those junk junk guys that come up at the end. You of give them the bar mat. Give them the fucking bar mat. Oh yeah, man. yeah I know all about that. Yeah, one. yeah. So we had that. Yeah. Uh, but this is an interesting story um, about the bar scene. Yeah, we had that special one called the Visine. <laughs> you know when dudes were being smart <laughs> ass, <laughs> we put a couple drops of Visine in their shot and they were gone because they shit their pants. <laughs> Bro, that's so bad. No, it's not. People don't be an asshole. With people fucking with your drinks and your food. That's true. That's true. That's rule number one. That is, no, I agree with that rule. I don't be an it's already a hard job as it is, bro. T- treat these people with fucking respect. I agree. I agree, but let's check out this thumbs up because uh, this is a, a very interesting story at a bar. Uh, the headline reads, Bartender knocks woman out with a vicious slap during a hurricane shot. Wait, is this that same thing that we covered back in, is this from Florida where they, they, they were doing that shot where they smacked a dude in the fucking face? No, no this is another one. This is a different one? This is a different one. All right. Different one. Hurricane slap. So uh, why go out to the bar for just drinks when you can have the bartender throw water in your face and slap you like you insulted their mother? It's a question people are asking themselves on a regular basis. The hurricane shot, which combines everyone's favorite things into one shot, has become a good way to get some views on social media. You take your shot, have the bartender throw some water in your face, then slap you. Uh, it's a simple equation for a good time out of the bar for and for eyeballs on the internet. What could possibly go wrong when a bartender is slapping around the customers? Well, I'll tell you. The bartender could be packing a strong enough pimp slap to knock folks unconscious. Uh, that happened at an unknown bar to one woman who decided she wanted an assault chaser with her shot. Uh, she pounds the drink, uh, takes the water to the face, Right on cue, then receives a vicious slap that sends her into next week. Don't worry, the guy recording the video didn't stop the video to catch her. He let the camera roll as he lied to the woman and made sure she didn't fall to the ground. He can be heard telling the KO'd woman, you're okay, (laughs) several times as he catches her and saves her from further damage. Here is the clip. You're okay. You're okay. Did I just knock her out? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> Come here. She is out. Is that the woman that knocked her out? Yeah. That said, did I just knock her That's out? Not- Bro, you she hit her with the fucking uh with the heel of her hand. Watch it. Oh. I mean, that was not, that's not a friendly, like, bar slap. Did I just slap. knock her out? Yeah. Oh, did I knock her out? Bitch, you tried to knock her out. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Who's paying for this shit? I mean, listen, here's what happened. Make sure you tip your bartender. What do you think happened here? What do you, what do you, why do you think she slapped her so hard? I don't know. Yeah, you do. Uh, well, Everybody she's, knows. She, okay, she was probably, I don't know. Everybody fucking knows. She was being a bitch? Nope. She's cute? She's cute, and the bartender wasn't cute. Mm. That's what the fuck that's about. Mm. Letting a little- A hundred percent. I could see that. We all know that. I could see that. Listen, dude, women are vicious. I, that's true. You know, women, like we said when Duke was here, they're the kind of- Women will, will tell another woman that they look great when they look like shit just so they look better. Because this is Gorlock in the video. Huh? Yeah, of course. She has four chins. <laughs> yeah. Did I knock her out? Yeah, of course you did, you fucking Hulk. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can. <laughs> yeah, she did that on purpose, bro. She hit that bitch extra hard just because she was hot and the other one ain't. That's oh. what the fuck that happened there. I guarantee it. And now she's shitting her pants because she's like, oh, fuck, this is going to be on the internet. I'm going, I'm get, getting arrested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we got with this, man? I, you know, I, I listen. I don't want to get slapped. I don't think well, I'm going to get I slapped. think if you're fucking stupid enough to pay someone for a shot and then to slap you, you, you fucking roll the dice on what you get. I don't think she should get in trouble. I'm just saying she went extra hard because of what I said. Mm. Oh, that's definitely yeah. Weird. But, like, you know, if you're dumb enough to pay for it, you get what you get. 
you yeah. know? And knock the fuck out. <laughs> that's my bike. Yeah, <laughs> no shit. I, I think of that. It's, it's kind of like our bike. Yeah, right. No, that's, my, that's my bike. That's mine. Yeah, I mean, make sure you tip your bartenders, guys. Yep. And don't be too hot. And don't be better looking than yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, well, guys, Andy, that is all I got. All right, guys. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. 